Hey guys, I'm Kelsey Caps, reader in residence at the Wild Detectives, and this is Wild Books. This month, we're super excited to tell you guys about the events that we have going on. Lots of great musicians. First one's coming in on November 7th. It's Robin Hitchcock. He was pretty well known in the 80s. He does a lot of surrealistic lyrics, that kind of thing. And he's gonna be doing a private show here in our yard, which we're very excited about. The day after, on November 8th, we're gonna have a Prince party to celebrate the release of his memoir, The Beautiful Ones. Turns out he wrote a memoir before he died. So we're gonna have the book release. We're gonna have memorabilia from a local Prince fan on display. We're gonna have Prince's personal DJ here doing tunes. And we're gonna essentially talk about everything purple and Prince and magnificent. So you should definitely come to that. And the other major concert we want you guys to know about is David Olney. He's coming in November 14th. He is an Americana pioneer, singer, songwriter. He's also an actor in the show Nashville, so he obviously knows how to touch a guitar and the parts that matter. So come check that out. <laughs> get, those, get those titties up. Okay. Um, <laughs> Book of the month is They Will Drown in Their Mother's Tears. And yes, it is as dramatic as the title makes it sound. It's amazing. It's The reason it's book of the month is because I've never read a book like it. It's out of translation. So the author is Swedish and the entire book is focused around this young girl who gets caught up in terrorism. So literally the first scene of the book drops you into the middle of her and her compatriots attempt at a suicide attack. Um, but the entire thing is essentially based around the butterfly theory type situation. So um, the girl gets captured and what you learn relatively quickly is that she believes that there are two different realities. So in one reality, um, she's the suicide bomber and in another, she's been taken into custody, um, actually still as part of terrorism, but in a different part of the world. And so the entire thing is essentially about how Swedish people, and I mean, if we're honest, like the Swedish government, um, takes all of these people, they put them into this thing called the rabbit yard. So a big part of the book is about how we start to discriminate against people solely because we suspect that they might be terrorists, um, because their culture is different than our own and we're afraid of those. And so um, the book is divided between those two realities. The girl telling her story and then a reporter who comes in to try and figure out what actually happened and help her unthread her delusions, so to speak. Um, it's fascinating, it's really well written, it's pretty quickly paced, um, but I mean, more than anything, it's very existential. So you're reading it and it, he forces you to identify with both sides of the story and understand um, our fear of other cultures and why that we treat people the way that we do and what the consequences are for those actions. It's an excellent read. Second book is The Water Dancer. You guys have probably heard about this book on Instagram or for from our Lord and Savior, Oprah herself. What's great about this book is that it takes a traditional slave narrative and kind of turns it on its head. So you get the traditional elements where the main character starts in rural Virginia, you understand his life as a slave there, what it's like on the plantation, his desire for freedom, all of that is built in, but What's great about it is that there's magical realism elements. So you get the normal slave narrative, but out of that, Coates really emphasizes um, the role of memory in slavery and our understanding of slavery as a whole. The protagonist of this book, um, literally his power of memory and the things that he can remember of his mother, of his culture, are what help him get other people out of the South. And so it literally trans, like takes him from one place to another. And so you get uh, all these different elements of not only just the traditional slave narrative, but also um, the unique power of slaves during that time to survive what they did, uh, take those narratives away and turn them into powerful stories that literally save people in that time and also us today. So really it transforms not only your perspective of what it was like to be a slave at that time, but also uh, emphasizes the power of memory, not only for those people, but also for us um, in that, like if we can remember these stories accurately and powerfully, then we can change that narrative, not only for ourselves, but for other people and our culture today. Last book is The Kingdom. The author of this book is French and he's very well known in France and also Europe as a whole. The guy was on like the Cannes panel as a judge, so he knows some things 
about some stuff? God, it's so good. So essentially, this is a story about, the, the first half of the book is a story about his journey into Catholicism and then back out of Catholicism. So it's his personal narrative in the beginning of grappling with faith, understanding what faith means to him um, as an adult. And I think that's a rare perspective, besides the fact that it's beautifully written, it's very funny. I mean, he, uh, in, in explaining his own story, he doesn't pull any punches. He, he takes himself uh, with a grain of salt, I suppose you should say. Like, he's very humble in the fact that, like, he admits his faults. He talks about why he got into faith and why he comes out of it. Um, which I think is very raw and honest and authentic story. And then the second half of the book is his examination of the Gospels and essentially like looking at Luke as a writer. He's a writer, so you get this really interesting perspective on how the Gospels were written, why they were written the way that they were. And I feel like it gives the Bible and those particular books a totally different light, a very humanistic light um, that I feel like is lacking in a lot of conversations about faith. So not only is his own story just entertaining and heartfelt, the second half of the book really challenges your perspectives on the Gospels and about our relationship to them as well. So even if you're a person of faith who maybe doesn't like outside perspectives on those things, I think it's a really um, humble approach to that topic, and I think anybody would get a lot of value out of reading this book in his perspective. Take him on for the team. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's a hard job. Somebody's got to do it. That's all for books, but remember, you can always follow us on social media. You can sign up for our newsletter so you always are up to date, and then we have our usual programming. So we have Inner Moonlight every second Wednesday, which is a poetry reading. We've got Kids in the Cliff every Sunday. You and your kids come out, read some books, and then our usual book clubs, English and Spanish, so something for everybody. So we would love to see you guys. Come hang out, read some things, buy a book, drink some stuff. We'd love to see you.